It has been quite a busy week on board the International Space Station. This weekend will be busy as well for the crew of Expedition 36. Chris Cassidy, Luca Parmitano, and Karen Nyberg, half of Expedition 36, will be working on Saturday to take a look at this faulty spacesuit that Luca Parmitano had worn back on September, uh, excuse me, on July 16th. As you can see, Luca there making a face as the crew checked out uh, this spacesuit earlier this week. They basically turned it back on and recreated the water leak, which you see some of the droplets there gathering uh, in the helmet. Uh, but what they're going to be doing on Saturday is replacing a water relief valve as well as a gas trap. And in between those two steps, they will recreate what they did this week, which is basically just turn the suit back on and check it out to see how the work uh, has progressed. The goal of this is to find the root cause uh, for this spacesuit water leak that happened to Luca while he and Chris were outside. And then the ground teams here in Houston will be watching along this weekend and we'll have a full report for you on Tuesday morning uh, of how all of that work went. There's also a reboost this weekend coming up for the International Space Station. The ATV-4 that's at the back end of the Russian segment will fire its thrusters. This will be setting up for uh, Chris Cassidy and Alexander Mazurkin and Pavel Vinogradov's uh, departure and landing coming up on September the 10th. But that reboost will take place uh, for about 3 minutes and 25 seconds on Saturday at 2.17 a.m. Central Time. Another cargo vehicle, the HTV, that is the Japanese cargo craft on board the International Space Station. Its operations also complete. There you see it on the bottom side of the U.S. segment. The crew worked very uh, diligently after HTV arrived at the space station to unload all the cargo that was on the inside. There's also some external cargo that uh, was released. And um, the uh, external pallet that was in the middle of HTV uh, was put back in earlier today. The release of the actual entire HTV-4 is coming up at 11 a.m. Central Time on Wednesday, September 4th. We'll have live coverage of that here on NASA Television as HTV's mission comes to a close. Leak checks also taking place uh, on Friday with Chris Cassidy, Pavel Vinogradov, and Alexander Mazurkin checking out their Sokol suits. These are the suits that they wore during launch and will wear during landing. Uh, their departure preparations are continuing on board the space station as these three crew members get ready to come home. They've been packing up all of their, uh, what mounts to their luggage that will come home aboard the Soyuz coming up on September the 10th. There you see all of our landing coverage. We'll have hatch closure coverage beginning at 3 p.m. Central Time, undocking coverage beginning at 6.15 p.m. Central Time, and landing coverage coming up at 8.45 p.m. Central Time, all of this on September the 10th. The crew also getting ready for the arrival of the Orbital Sciences Cygnus vehicle. That launch scheduled for September the 17th from the Wallops Flight Facility up in Virginia. If all goes according to plan, Orbital should arrive up at the station on September the 22nd for a rendezvous and docking as this Orbital uh, Cygnus vehicle performs a test uh, demonstration mission to check out its systems and if all goes well Orbital should be flying some routine cargo flights just like SpaceX Technologies did uh, beginning last year. We'll have a briefing coming up on Wednesday September the 4th at 3 p.m. Central Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Time to take a look at this entire mission and also the conclusion of NASA's COTS program. COTS is what both SpaceX and Orbital Sciences have participated in to build these two cargo vehicles. And that briefing will be Mike Suffredini, the head of the space station program, Alan Lindemoyer, the head of the NASA COTS program, as well as Frank Culbertson, former astronaut who is now executive vice president of Orbital Sciences, as well as Courtney McMillan, who will be the NASA lead flight director for that mission. Again, that'll take place on Wednesday at 3 p.m. Central Time here on NASA Television. This week has also had a ton of science going on on board the space station. Karen Nyberg worked with the Spheres Rings experiment. If you've watched NASA TV and seen the Spheres experiment, you'll notice this looks a little bit different. And this experiment, which is out of the University of Maryland and DARPA, takes a look at uh, formation flying of many satellites and also some power transfer. The thought is that these two satellites could uh, transfer power between each other uh, from very, very small distances without actually touching. So Karen Nyberg and Luca Parmitano worked on that this week. Parmitano also worked on something called In Space 3. This takes a look at uh, what are known as colloids. These are small particles that reside inside liquids. And uh, the important thing about running these experiments up in space is that the sediment doesn't fall out like it would here on Earth. So you can imagine something that's got a bunch of uh, particles inside a liquid. Those things would uh, settle at the bottom because of gravity. 
So for scientists to study them uh, in their natural state, they fly them up in space where there is no gravity. Uh, now what these colloids can do is actually change the property of the liquid whenever a magnetic field is applied to it so that liquid all of a sudden becomes a solid. This has direct impacts to life here on Earth because it could lead to uh, better braking systems and also better buildings and bridges because you could use these things to help uh, buildings and bridges weather an earthquake. So uh, that is what that experiment means for life here on Earth and also life in space. Luca Parmitano also working on some Biolab troubleshooting. Biolab is uh, a biological rack that is inside the Columbus Laboratory. Uh, one of the microscopes inside that uh, rack was having some issues, so he performed uh, some work on that to get that rack up and running again. Chris Cassidy worked this week with Robonaut. That is the robot that's on board the space station. They performed some checkout maneuvers of that. Uh, Chris Cassidy also put on some virtual reality gear to uh, run Robonaut through the paces himself. Uh, but these checkouts of this big robot on board the space station continue. Pavel Vinogradov and the rest of the Russian crew also worked on the lower body negative pressure experiment. What this does is have the crew put on a pair of trousers that uh, sort of pulls uh, the uh, body pressure down toward their legs. It simulates what they will uh, experience whenever they come back to Earth. Of course, of course, up on uh, orbit, they don't uh, have gravity to pull the blood down. So these trousers do reenact that to study how the crew members' bodies react to that phenomenon. And finally, Chris Cassidy and Karen Nyberg uh, working on some eye exams this week. This is part of the ocular health experiment to take a look at some phenomena that's been noticed recently to, that the uh, crew members' eyes tend to change while they're up in space. So to determine exactly what causes that and in order to predict it, uh, they're being put through the paces in a number of different experiments to take a look at that using an ultrasound to examine their eyes. There you see the ultrasound as Karen Nyberg worked on that uh, today, and that activity will continue into next week. We will be off on Monday uh, due to the federal Labor Day holiday, but we will be back on Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. We'll have an update for you on this weekend's activities to repair that spacesuit uh, to see where the crew gets. And, of course, we'll have live coverage beginning on Wednesday of the uh, NASA Orbital uh, Sciences Mission Overview Briefing that will occur on Wednesday at 3 p.m. Central Time here on NASA Television. We will see you back here Tuesday morning on NASA TV. This is Mission Control Houston.